Hi, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is the link to linguistics, and uh, I feel like I should have some like hand gesture to go along with that, like link to linguistic. Okay, never mind. Um, in this series, we are going to talk about all the things that linguists know, all the secrets that we have that are kind of useful with conversation design. So I have a background in linguistics. I have a degree in linguistics. And as a conversation designer, a lot of what I learned in school has helped me. And if you are a linguist and you're kind of looking to get into conversation design, or you are a conversation designer and you're like, these linguists, they might be onto something, then you're in the right place. Um, we have partnered with the Digital Assistant Academy to create this series. So the first concept that I thought would be good for this intro video is something that blew my mind when I was a little baby freshman in college in Ling 101. It is the idea of prescriptivism versus descriptivism. And it's very simple, just the idea that if you are kind of prescribing the way language should be done, you're a prescriptivist. And if you are describing it, you're kind of just looking at what's going on like, oh, that person just used a smiley face in an email. How fascinating. Here's one example. So there are those people out there that get really annoyed when they hear something like, oh my gosh, you're literally killing me right now. They're like, do you even know what the word literally means? It means literally. They are taking a very prescriptivist approach. Whereas a descriptivist might be like, huh, it seems like people are using the word literally in contexts where they don't actually mean literally. What's going on here? And then they might get all excited and write a PhD thesis about it. So it's kind of just like two different approaches. One is not better than the other, but in general, the way that linguists kind of do our thing is with a descriptivist point of view. We're much more interested in what's actually going on and figuring out why and theorizing about why somebody used a smiley face in an email. So I remember just being so enthralled with this because I had always lived my life thinking that language was this system that was set in stone. So when I found out that there are these magical creatures out there called linguists who embrace the variability of language and how much language changes over time, I felt like I had found my crew. So how does this relate to conversation design? When you are creating a chatbot or a voice experience, obviously you want to be understood by whoever is interacting with that system. And because we are UX designers, we are always thinking about the best way to be received. We want to think through the brand of that conversational experience and really critically about what kind of language that audience will be expecting, what kind of language that audience understands, and what kind of language that audience uses. Because we're also responsible for the other side of things. We need to be understanding what they say back to the system. And if we program our conversational system to only understand proper English, spoiler alert, your chatbot will fail every time. So for example, if you had a chatbot that helps people pick a gift out, and this brand is very light and fun, and you weren't aware that you could take more of a descriptivist point of view versus a prescriptivist point of view, you may be inclined to write a prompt like, hello, welcome to the gift picker guide. If you are ready to begin, please choose an option below. It's kind of robotic. It's very like grammatically correct, obviously, but it doesn't deliver on what that brand is really looking for. And so much of how we communicate different identities and different feelings is through different language. So instead, you could write something like, so excited you're here all ready to pick out some lovely holiday gifts for the fam. And you could even throw in some emojis because real people use emojis. So there you have it. This is my take on why a descriptivist mindset can be really helpful with conversation design. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. So if you have any other good examples of how you take 
a descriptivist or prescriptivist mindset in conversation design, please let us know. And join us next time for the link to linguistics. Thanks, guys.